Dipole moments in polar molecules. Polar molecules exhibit a dipole moment. It is the result of the electronegative atom attracting the electrons more strongly. It leaves behind a slight positive charge on the electron pore region around the hydrogen atom. In this case fluorine of course is more electronegative. It pulls the electrons toward it leaving a slightly negative charge. This is measured by a dipole moment, mu, which equals the charge times r, the distance between the charges. The units are Debye's 3.36 times 10 to the minus 30th Coulomb meters. Notice the behavior of polar molecules in an electric field. In the electric field, the polar molecules orient themselves, negative to positive plate and positive to negative plate. Bond moments and the resultant dipole moments are shown here for ammonia and nitrogen trifluoride. In the case of ammonia, the electron attraction is toward the nitrogen, which is more electronegative than the hydrogen, and toward the lone pair. The lone pair has a strong electron pull. In the case of nitrogen trifluoride, the fluorines are more electronegative than the nitrogen, so the pull is away, and also the pull of the pair of lone pair of electrons pulls the electrons toward it. The resulting dipole moment is much smaller, 0.24 compared to 1.46. Does boron trifluoride have a dipole moment? If you look at the geometry of boron trifluoride, you notice that it is trigonal planar. Although there, the bonds are polar between the boron and the fluorines, they are equally spaced at a 120 degree bond angle resulting in a nonpolar molecule. How about dichloromethane, CH2Cl2? Does this have a dipole moment? Here we have the pull of the electrons toward the chlorines and away from the hydrogens toward the carbon. There is a resultant dipole moment. The molecule is polar. How does Lewis theory explain bonds in hydrogen and fluorine? The sharing of two electrons between the two atoms is a result of an overlap. Hydrogen has a bond enthalpy of 436, a bond length of 74, and the hydrogen H2 molecule is the result of an overlap between two 1s orbitals. For fluorine, Notice that the bond length is much larger. Here we are overlapping two of the two p orbitals. The valence bond theory says that bonds are formed by sharing of electrons from overlapping atomic orbitals. Here we have a diagram showing what happens as two hydrogen atoms come closer together to form a bond. Notice that as they come closer, there is a decrease in the potential energy resulting in a stable molecule H2. Here's a graphic that shows how this happens. The change in electron density as two hydrogen atoms approach each other is quite evident. Let's look at valence bond theory in ammonia. Nitrogen has the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Orbital diagram is thus. The two electrons in the 1s, the two electrons in the 2s, and one electron each in the 2p's. The 2p's are then available for bonding. If there are three hydrogens available, they each have an electron in the 1s orbital, they can fill by overlapping the 3p orbitals in ammonia. If the bonds form from the overlap of these three 2p orbitals on nitrogen with the 1s orbital on each hydrogen, what would the molecular geometry of ammonia be? Well, the three p orbitals are orthogonal to one another. The bond angle should be predicted to be 90 degrees. The actual bond angle is 107.3 degrees. It is clear that valence bond theory does not explain the geometry correctly. 
we need a better bonding theory.